What happens to our pets after they pass? Bible answers. For all of us who have seen our beloved pets cross that rainbow bridge, we can be encouraged. Will we ever see our dearly departed pets again? This is a huge question. I believe that I've found the answer to this question in the Bible, and it is great news. Years ago, I was told by a man that I respected. He said that animals do not have souls, and that once their life was over, that was it. They were gone forever. It was over. This devastated me at 24 years of age. I was told this after learning that Mom's Doberman, Wally, whom I loved so dearly, was hit by a car and killed. I have held this belief for a lot of years that I would never see any of them again, which made losing the pets that I have loved all the more painful. I have since gained new hope and belief that we will see them again. They are like children to us. We have loved them as our children. Love never dies. I have come to realize that this man was wrong. Now note the use of the word soul in the following two passages from the Bible. Psalm 7419a O deliver not the soul of thy turtle dove unto the multitude of the wicked. It doesn't just say turtle dove. It says the soul of the turtle dove. If a turtle dove has a soul, then all animals must have a soul. Job 12.10 In whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? Every living thing is listed separately to mankind in this verse. Hence, this has to mean that the animals, everything that God has ever created and given life to, must have a soul. If it was just one group, the Bible would have specified that, just as it does specify mankind in this verse. Hence, we can determine that animals do have a soul. What happens to the soul after the body dies? Well, when the body dies, the soul without the body moves on. The next passage states that all physical bodies have spiritual bodies. 1 Corinthians 15.44b If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. In Romans 8.20 and 21 it says, For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. What I get from this passage is that the frustration, which I believe to be the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, was not the animal's choice, though they were also subject to it. The word hope is never used casually in the Bible. Hence, all creation is liberated upon decay or death. Their souls move forward into freedom and glory that we as believers in Christ also move forward into heaven. Every creature will give praise to God. Revelation 5.13 Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. This verse includes all creatures praising Jesus, the Lamb of God. 1 Corinthians 2.9 But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. What this verse is saying is that we cannot even begin to imagine the incredible things that God has planned for us.